Hello, this is Shirline of Kathanika. The story I have for you today is a folk tale from Kerala. It is called The Legend of the Golden Shower. Once upon a time, in the lush, green land of Kerala, full of coconut and banana trees, there lived a boy called Unni. Unni lived with his mother and father, his grandmother and grandfather, in a modest home. Unni was only four years old, a bright boy with a twinkle in his eye and curly hair. Unni loved to listen to stories. Every night, as the sun set in the Arabian Sea, Unni's mother would prepare for bedtime. She would dim down the kerosene lamp, unwind her long, long hair, spread out the mat on the mud floor and call to little Unni. She would then put him on her lap, run her fingers through his soft hair and begin to tell him a story. Unni's mother told Unni stories of Lord Krishna about how Lord Krishna was when he was a little boy, how naughty he was, how fearless and brave he was, about how Lord Krishna would face and defeat the Asuras. Unni's mother would tell him different stories all about Lord Krishna every night as he lay down to sleep. Unni was fascinated by the stories and wanted to see Lord Krishna for himself. Amma, I want to see Lord Krishna, pleaded Unni to his mother. How can I see him? Unni, to see Lord Krishna, you must pray to him every day and say that you want to see him. And some day he just might decide to visit you, replied his mother. And to call Lord Krishna is the easiest thing. Really, how can I call him? asked Unni. Does Lord Krishna like to eat? asked his mother. Butter and curd, said Unni brightly. That's right, said his mother. I will teach you a little prayer to call Lord Krishna. If you say this prayer sincerely, I am very sure the Lord would most definitely visit you. Now, listen carefully and repeat after me. Bhagwan Krishna ji, will you come to me? I'll give you curd and whey. We can eat it up and pray. Unni was delighted. He repeated, Bhagwan Krishna ji, will you come to me? I'll give you curd and whey. We can eat it up and play. That's it. This is easy, smiled little Unni. From that day onwards, Unni would close his eyes tight, join his little hands and murmur to himself, Bhagwan Krishna ji, will you come to me? I'll give you curd and whey. We can eat it up and play. Every day, at morning, noon and night, Unni would ardently repeat his request. He would also ask his mother to set aside a small bowl of curd and whey handy, just in case the Lord decided to visit him. Up in heaven, Lord Krishna was pleased with the boy's sincere request and made up his mind to visit him. The days flew past, seasons changed and Unni went on praying. One hot summer afternoon, as little Unni was enjoying his curd and whey on the veranda of his home, a small dark boy of his age appeared at the door. Unni looked up from his bowl and saw the boy. The boy grinned at Unni. Unni was a friendly child and he returned the smile. He then invited the boy on his veranda to join him. You want some curd and whey? asked Unni. The boy nodded happily. Unni ran away into the kitchen and soon returned with a bowl full of fresh curd and whey for the boy. The little boy and Unni sat down and enjoyed their favourite snack together. When they were done, Unni looked at the boy and said, Would you like to play with me? The boy nodded again. So Unni and the boy began playing games. 
they played hide and seek they played hopscotch they played marbles and they also built small mud castles the boys were so engaged in playing that they didn't seem to notice the time passing by at all the afternoon turned to evening and the sun began to set realizing it would soon be night the boy said he must leave unni i had so much fun this afternoon now i must go but i want to give you a gift said the little boy so the boy took off the jewel encrusted gold waistband that he was wearing and handed it to unni little unni was delighted he had never ever seen a waistband made of real gold and gems before he was mesmerized by its beauty the waistband was studded with precious gems there were green emeralds and blood red rubies there were blue sapphires and yellow topaz there were also little pearls on the waistband were teeny tiny bells in a neat row these glittered in the sunlight and made a small twinkling sound as the evening breeze swayed them ding ding he stood lost admiring the magical waistband meanwhile the little boy smiled and quietly disappeared just at that moment unni's mother came out to check on the boys and found unni alone gazing at the dazzling waistband she was shocked where did you get it from she asked unni unni reported all that had happened unni's mother gently told unni that he should not be accepting such expensive presents from anyone she thought it must be some boy from the neighborhood and his parents will soon come over to take back the gold ornament she said to unni unni this is a very precious ornament give it to me i am going to keep it in a safe place and unni's mother carefully kept the waistband the next day was the festival of vishu the new year unni was woken up early in the morning by his mother she covered his eyes and took him to the area where she had displayed fruits grains and vegetables she unclosed unni's eyes and unni was happy to see the beautiful arrangement then unni's mother oiled his hair gave him a nice oil massage and took him to take a nice bath she put on new clothes for him and unni he very happily went outside in his veranda and started trotting up and down like a proud peacock he then sat down and had some lovely paisam which is a kind of a porridge after that his tummy nice and full unni went and started playing out in the courtyard he walked up and down marched up and down with his hands on his hip admiring his lovely clothes and then unni stopped he remembered the beautiful golden waistband he called to his mother and said amma can i please wear that waistband just for some time well since nobody came for the waistband so far unni's mother relented and she let unni don it unni smiled as he felt the waistband sit firmly on his waist how happy he was the golden waistband on unni's little waist suddenly unni and his mother heard an outcry outside their home they went to see what the matter was outside there was chaos people were running and shouting up and down the street there was an old lady who was passing by unni's mother stopped her and asked mother what is happening oh didn't you hear replied the old woman this morning when the chief priest had opened the temple he found the golden waistband which was around the idol of lord krishna had gone missing then she caught sight of unni's belt and she cried out loud hey that's the lord's waistband how did you get it thief 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 come here everyone here is the thief soon the entire village had gathered in unni's courtyard including the chief priest he was terrified 
terrified. He began to cry. He narrated the entire events of how he got the waistband, but nobody believed him. He is a thief, they said. Mundi's mother was perplexed. She requested the chief priest to take away the waistband calmly. But he continued to accuse little Unni and call him names. This angered Unni's mother. She pulled out the waistband of Unni and she threw it on a nearby tree saying, Take away this ill-fated waistband. The waistband landed on the branch of a tree and there, in front of the very eyes of all the villagers, it transformed into yellow blossoms, the shape of the tiny bells that were on the waistband. It was then that it occurred to everyone that it must have been the Lord himself who had visited Unni. And from that day onwards, for every Vishu, all the families in Kerala also keep a bunch of the golden shower flowers in the Vishu display. So that's the story for today. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and share the story with your friends. Bye-bye.